this third model, we will describe what is the main difference in the innovation project. And the main difference is, as researchers, we create function, but the users that we will deal with, they want us to offer value. We'll see first that we must define different type of concept. First, I will define the property as a nature's point of view. The property is what we discover. Maybe we haven't done it yet, but it exists by itself. The oxidation or photoluminescent property of a molecule, the magnetism of a solid, they exist even if we haven't discovered the molecule yet, if we haven't synthesized the solid yet. From the property, we have the function, and the function is kind of the researcher point of view. The function is what we do when we take a property and we modify it. The oxidation property of a molecule by itself has no use, but if we can turn this molecule into a catalyst by combining with the correct porous matrix, now we have a property that is being put in action. Finally, we have the value, and I define the value as the customer's point of view. The value is what people want. For example, they don't want a catalyst, they want a more efficient catalyst. They don't want photoluminescent molecule, or they don't even want organic LEDs. They want better high contrast display on their cell phone. As researchers, our work is actually focused on the two first items, properties and function. And this is what we do. We discover things, we identify properties, new compounds, new concepts, and we will play with these properties, we will modify them, we will highlight some features of the properties. But on the other side, which is what I call the real world, the customers, the users, they are looking for value. And most of the research we do, we stay on the side of our domain and we don't go beyond the wall and try to see what is the value that is expected and how we should work to be able, as we create function, to offer value to users and customers. In other words, we can define the property like the way the product was made how we combine different features, different properties, different structure to build the system, the material. The function is the reason why the product was made. And the value is the reason why we like, why we buy the product. And when we look from the property to function to value, this logical path is what usually we follow when we do research. Starting with the property of a molecule we discovered try to combine it with something to make it as a function and finally claim that this function is something we can sell but innovation should go the opposite way starting with the value that users customers expect see how we can offer this value by combining the right function and finally explore how we can create this function by using different type of property what is difficult to understand here is the concept of value by itself. Because usually we believe that the value is what the product does. It's what we use it for. But the fact is, the value is what we feel when we use a product. So the value is, in a way, it's the end of the sentence, I like this product because. Let's take an example, money, banknotes. Their property is a combination of a certain type of paper or plastic, inks, and other features that increase the lifetime and reduce the fraud and counterfeiting. But the function of banknote is to facilitate commercial transactions. The banknote have no function, they are just a piece of paper or plastic with some ink on it. The value of banknote, why we use them, why we like them, it's because we can buy something, but buy these things based on the agreement between the seller and the buyer. If I have some banknotes with me in a country, I will buy stuff because the seller agrees that this piece of paper or plastic will be something that he can use for his own good. If I take the same banknotes and go to another country and want to buy the same thing, 
most of the time I won't be able to do it because the seller will not see the value of these banknotes. Say, oh, this um, money from another country, I have no use of it. So we see that the value of the banknotes, it's not an intrinsic value as a property. It's a value based on the fact that people who are using them give the value. This is what they are looking for. Let's go back a little bit to the function and try to define four types of functions. First, the primary function is a function the system must possess. Without it, users don't use the system. Let's look at some example. If you look at a car, a car must transport you from point A to point B. If a car doesn't manage to transport you from A to B, you won't use the car, you won't buy the car, you won't even look at the car. In the same way, uh, the primary function of a coffee machine is to make coffee. And for a fridge, it's to keep products cold. When we look at the primary function, we can say that the successful primary function is what we call usually disruptive or breakthrough innovation. It's when a function, a new primary function, is able to do something that we couldn't before. The second function is what I call the discriminating function. The discriminating function modifies the primary function. In other words, it helps to differentiate from competition. When you look at different types of cars, there are still cars in the way that their primary function is still to transport you from A to B, but they can do it in different ways. For example, you can have a car that is faster than the others, or a car that is uh, energy efficient, or a car that is cheaper we see here that this additional function modify and help to differentiate the primary function. Usually what we call incremental innovation is related to the development of this type of function. The third function is what I call the accessory function. The accessory function is an additional function disconnected from the primary function. It provides an unrelated function. Here are some examples. Your car may have a radio, or passenger mirror, or Wi-Fi. You see that these functions are totally disconnected from the fact that the car will transport you from A to B. There are additional functions. They will provide something different, something else, but will not modify the initial function of the car. Finally, we have what I call the marketing function. And the marketing function, it's not a function at all. It's based on some additional features with no actual function. A good example is the Louboutin shoes. This uh, French brand is very famous. And Louboutin shoes have always a red sole. This sole could be green, yellow, blue, any color. It doesn't modify by any way the qualities and manufacturing of the shoes. This marketing function helps people to recognize Louboutin shoes. The logo on the t-shirt doesn't change the fabric, doesn't change the quality of the t-shirt. The uh, color, the fact that the Ferrari is red, doesn't change the function and properties and function of the Ferrari. Or if you have a Cerberity branding, when the Cerberity will use some phone, it doesn't modify the quality of the phone. But this type of marketing function is something that is very important and a lot of companies will use them when all the other functions are quite similar, when they don't manage to discriminate their own product from competition. As we have been talking about the innovation and research, this concept of functions can help us to see if some invention is a real innovation. I took the example from a paper published in the Nature Material in 2018, and the researcher published a paper on what they call thermochromic solar cells for smart photovoltaic window using the structural phase transition in an inorganic solid. This inorganic solid is using cesium, lead, iodide, bromide. When we compare what was actually achieved, what they observed was a very nice result where you have a solid face on the top here, you have the crystal structure. In the crystal structure, at low temperature, the solid is almost transparent, 82% of transparency. It's not the top, not so bad. As you heat it, there will be some phenomenon that will lead to a structural transition. And the result will be that the new type of crystal will lose its transparency, but will 
display some photovoltaic properties. And this mechanism, this transition, it's reversible. So this is what it's achieved. This is the invention. This is a discovery. This is a real science. The innovation being claimed, they show the picture of a window, initially transparent, that you can switch into a solar cell. When we look at that and when we question if this invention, if this discovery, if this result are real innovation, we can use the concept of function. First, we have to find out if this fixed the real problem, the real problem the way we defined it before. People would be happy if there was a solution to this problem. And of course, because they are not the first, does it fix a real problem better than the current solution? Let's look at first at the primary function. Here I displayed the graph summarizing all the results regarding the photovoltaic efficiencies for commercial and laboratory photovoltaic cells. On the y-axis, you have the energy efficiency in percentage. This value goes up to 45%. The people at Berkeley, they reported a photovoltaic efficiency of 7%, which is the blue arrow you see on the bottom. As a result, we can say that when we compare the primary function, because the primary function of a photovoltaic panel is actually to generate electrical current, we cannot say that this new type of material will be able to compete with the current solution. Let's look at the discriminating function that this type of material can provide something that nobody else can do. What they claim was that they can use this material as a photovoltaic material that will allow you to switch your windows from transparent to opaque. That's interesting, but the fact is that you have already some companies who manage to deliver at the commercial level some doors and windows where you can switch in seconds between transparent and opaque. What about the photovoltaic windows? There are some projects like solar window where they claim that they can actually cover the buildings with windows that will be made of photovoltaic panels but still transparent. We see that this new claim regarding the discriminating function will be difficult to compete against the current competition. We are at the point where our initial question was we have to find what was the relationship between research and innovation. Do we have to do some research for innovation or do we have to choose between doing research or doing innovation? What we see here is the key point will not to decide whether we want to do research or innovation, but to see how we can articulate our competencies that allow us to develop functions for value. Because what happens here is that innovation will start with a problem and will end with a value. And it will end with a value because the value is why people buy your innovation. They don't buy it because you are using this molecule. They don't buy it because you develop this function. They buy it because they find a value in using what you have developed. We can express this in other words using the famous quote in the marketing uh, word by Theodore Levitt who said that people don't want to buy a quarter-inch drill. They want to buy a quarter-inch hole. They don't buy a drill because they want to have a drill. They buy a drill because they want to have a hole on their wall because with their hole, they will be able to hook some photos of their family. The manufacturer made the drill, but the customers buy the fact that with the drill, they will be able to do something and change something in their life, like putting a photos on the wall. People don't buy what you sell, they buy what they can do with it. In other words, people don't buy products or services, people buy transformation. They buy the after compared to the before, before they had your product. And one question, maybe the only question we should ask as researchers who want to do some innovation, the only question we should ask first will be which transformation people will feel when using my innovation. What will be the transformation in their life that will allow them to see that they must buy what I've developed? And now it's time to define what we call value. We know that the value is a feeling. Value is what people feel and we can define five types of values. 
The first value is what I call the life-changing. A real problem, it's always a real problem, the way we define it. A real problem finds its solution. We can say that now I can do things I couldn't do before. With space rockets, with computers, with antibiotics. This life-changing is now, from the user point of view, it's what we call the breakthrough innovation. Second value, the life improvement. Still a real problem is solved, but it's better solved than the other way. I can do things in a better way than before. Cars allowed me to transport me from A to B. I had all the transportation modes before, but the way they do it is better. We can say that the life improvement is related to what we call the incremental innovation. Value number three is what I call the social improvement. You have a real problem solved, and it's solved in a way that impacts less the others. My choices make others' life better. If I have a chemical company, the best way for me to save money is to put all my chemical waste to the river. That will cost less, and that will not impact my production. Of course, that will impact others with the pollution. I can decide that I want to modify the way I will process my waste, and doing that will allow me actually to improve the life of others. Value number four, it's what I call the social ranking. If I possess something, maybe something I don't need, a type of car, a type of phone, it's because I link this product with social ranking. Being the owner of this product shows my position in the social food chain. And usually this is what we will do. Why do we buy very fast car when we cannot drive beyond the speed limit? This is usually because it tells us something about us to the rest of the community. And finally, the last value is what is called the mimetic design. There's no logical need. Actually, I just want this so badly because others have it, and that's the only reason. I want the last cell phone because everybody is running to buy it, so I just follow the move. What we see here is that as researchers, if we want to develop innovation, innovation is not only about developing function, but what will be important is we must align them with the expected values. Because successful innovation is always based on functions valued by users. And the connection or discrepancy between function, which is what the researcher will develop, and values, which is what the users will expect, will be the key point for us to find or not find what will be the successful innovation. Let's take a first example. A teacher building a course. The function of the professor will be to create the course. That will be the professor's task. On the other side, the value will be the student expectation. The professor will try to create the course and build functions inside the course because the functions of the course is to transmit knowledge and to provide skills. What will be the value the student will expect from this course? Is it to learn how to do something? Is it just to pass the exam? Is it to get a degree? Whatever the content of the course itself. We see here that we have a difference between the reason why the professor will create a course and the reason why the student will attend the course. Let's expand a little bit with another example and ask ourselves, what are the functions of university? What are the primary functions of the university? If university doesn't offer its function, we don't even look at what they offer. We don't want to enroll. Is it to transmit knowledge? That was the function of university for many and many years. But we can say that now, the knowledge, you can find it for free over the internet. Did this primary function has changed? And is the primary function of university now to deliver degrees? Discriminating function of the university. What modifies the primary function and will allow a university to differentiate from others? There could be a lot of different functions. Specific programs, there could be some research facilities. Accessory function, the additional function, disconnected from the primary function. Sport facilities, student residence are some functions that allow you to live, to enjoy some life, but they are totally disconnected from the primary function of the university, which is either to transmit knowledge or to deliver degrees. And when we look at the final marketing function, which is not really a function, there could be also an endless list of different functions.
What is important? The Shanghai ranking? How does it make the university better about what students can get? Great student life, great parties, good location, by the beach, etc. etc. Now let's look at the other side, which is actually why people attend universities. And we can do the same work. We can question do they attend university to obtain a degree? Or because they want to get a good life? Or they want to learn how to start a business? Or maybe achieve greatness? Or maybe the only goal is to make friends or find a partner. These are the value from the users, from the student. A university, if they want to differentiate, they will have to see how they can align the function they developed with the value that some student, some candidate will expect.